Recognized, Uncle Walker, D, 0, 1, Emily of Arden, D, 1, 2, Joe Moniak, D, 0, 5, Darcy L. Ross, D, 0, 3, Evil Sands Carney, D, 0, 4, Magpie Games, D, 1, 7, Initiate Masks Actual Play, Story Arc Title, Relations, Episode 1. Hello team, welcome to the cave. We have something very special for us all today. We're all, s I'm so excited. I'm so excited. We have the creator of Masks. You may have heard of Masks. Masks is a role-playing game that we talk about about every other episode on the show. But we have the actual creator of the game with us today who is going to run an actual play. And I get to be Robin. I'm so excited. <laughs> Brendan Conway, thanks for coming on Whelmed. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really glad to be here. We had a little intro episode, so you get to hear a little bit more about Brendan, and we're going to have a full-on post-game discussion session as well with Brendan, so I'm really excited about that. We also have some amazing special guests, some of my favorite people in the podcast industry, starting with Darcy Ross, who you may have heard in our first discussion episode ever. Darcy? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a big deal around Whelmed, I guess, right? <laughs> That's why you brought me back you're kind on. Of a, you're kind of a big deal. Yeah, it's for my exhaustive knowledge of DC Universe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. She also comes up like every other episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, so I will be playing uh, one of my favorite characters, the one I least expected to like. So I was, I'm going to be playing Calder today, Aqualad. That's awesome. I'm so glad. At least expected to like? Yeah, his superhero name is Aqua Lad. It's the lamest oh, start right. to any character it's because name. Because you, you didn't grow up on DC Comics and everybody's a lad or lass right. or boy or girl. It's just part of how people name themselves, right? <laughs> a, a normal naming convention. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm stoked. I can't wait. Yeah, I think you're the most appropriate person to play Aqua Lad mm. in this group. I'm pretty <laughs> excited about it. Our next guest is Emily Booza, who was just on our show in a discussion session talking about. Oh, I don't know. Shipping and Miss Martian. <laughs> yeah, among other things. And I think she's going to be doing a little of both. <laughs> That's right. Welcome back to the show, Emily. It's good to be back. Who are you playing today, Emily? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm playing Miss Martian, my favorite character from the show, if that wasn't clear by everything I say online about her. Uh, so I'm super excited because I've kind of wanted to play Miss Martian since I was 13, and now I have an opportunity to do just that. Nice. Whelmed. Making dreams come true. And um, your beau in the room, Ishan Sherwood from Total Party Thrill. How you doing, everyone? I am playing Connor Kent, also known as The Superboy. The Superboy. We're putting a the in front of it now? I mean, you know, I was just at LexCore reading the files. <laughs> oh, I see. That's what they call me. Oh, I see. I see. So you yeah. wanted to take on your other father's preferred title for you? Is that what you're telling us? Look, I'm trying things out, okay? I'm young. <laughs> it's commencement. I see. That's pretty fair. <laughs> and next in our line is one of our favorite people ever, and that would be Neil Powell. Hey. Welcome to the show again. Yeah. What's funny is like I'm always on the show, but not really on the show because I do most of the editing. <laughs> That's true. Now. So it's like I'm there. And then if Rich ever makes me mad, get ready for him to say some crazy stuff on the, the next episode. <laughs> no, I'm just... And who are you playing, Neil? So I am playing Kid Flash. Outstanding. None other than Wally West. And uh, like I said to you guys before, I drank a 20 ounce Red Bull to prepare for my role <laughs> as Kid Flash. So I am ready to go. Outstanding. And uh, of course, I am your host, Rich Howard, and I am playing to absolutely no one's surprise, Dick Grayson today. Still is Robin, actually. And Brendan, we'll have you go over a little bit of the setting, but this takes place a couple years after the f season one. And I'm still Robin, yep. right? I haven't become Nightwing. You are indeed. And because we're sort of in this intermediate zone, uh, a number of these little details we're going to like talk about and you can flesh them out as makes sense as your understanding of the character. But as they're designed, a lot of them are pointed at particular things based on how they seem to be. So for instance, Robin, still Robin, therefore that character is the playbook of protege, meaning your story is all about your relationship to Batman still. 
Uh, that's the mm-hmm. dominant thing of your character. And so everybody, there are little choices there to sort of speak about what you're up to. But where we actually are in time is two years approximately after the end of the first season, two years into that five-year time jump, and we're at the end of the school year at graduation time for Connor and Megan. Outstanding. We're getting a graduation episode, Emily. Yes! Yes! I know you'd be (laughs) excited about that. Mm -hmm. The only thing more excited she'd have been if if it had been a prom episode, I think she'd have been in. Even more excited. <laughs> Me too. Uh, Pick out the right uh, dress. <laughs> dang it. That's right. Missed opportunity. Right. Uh, Brandon, yeah. So if you can uh, just set us up. You gave us some letters at the beginning of the game that I have read mine. Everybody got a chance to read theirs? Yep. Uh, yes. It's a pretty pretty cool mechanic to actually introduce people so we can drop right into the action. Kind of give us a little history of what's happened recently in our current relationships and dynamics that I think will come out during the show. So whatever you think, Brendan, uh, is important for people to know beforehand, kind of give us that setup and we'll go from there. Awesome. So yeah, I wrote these letters mostly because Masks is generally designed for like campaign play, not different from the actual TV show. And it helps then to have to to hit like the maximum drama, tension, angst, fun, uh, to have a little bit of that stuff has happened previously that we're dealing with the repercussions of this time as more things happen this time that then lead to still more repercussions down the line. So to sort of prime that pump so that we're not coming in fresh the way we would if we were actually starting a brand new campaign of masks, I wrote these letters to say essentially like, there's been a prior episode. All this stuff happened in the prior episode and we are still somewhat dealing with these repercussions. So to prime what that is, Everybody, as players, Masks is the kind of game where we live off dramatic irony and, like, we as players all want to know what's going on at the same time. So it's like, we we want everybody to know at the level of us what's going on, even if the characters may be on different levels of actually understanding what the heck is happening. So, for example, one of the things that uh, has come up of late is specifically, like, Megan in some battle with Simon maybe went a little too far with her powers and Connor got caught in the blast. And this is a thing that happened and, and people would have differing awareness of how significant this was, depending upon I'm interested in hearing, for instance, how much you think McGann or Connor would actually have been talking about it to the team. But within the letter as proposed, like Connor is like, that was not great. That was bad. That, that thing was bad. And Megan is like, no, it's cool. I got it. I got this under control feeding into the burgeoning powers of her as she is becoming more and more powerful leading into season two. So the core things to set up then, that's one of them, that that is a source of tension. Another major source of tension and like a prior episode was when Connor and Calder uh, broke into LexCorp to steal information about Connor's exact makeup, seeing that he's part Lex Luthor. And to try to figure out what that actually means, what is going to happen to Connor, what the actual deal is with his genetics. They kept it quiet in the hopes of keeping everyone out of trouble and safe. That may not have been the brightest move. And as you might expect, trying to break into... Yes, I see see that look. Uh, Trying to break into LexCorp didn't go so hot. They had to call for help. And when they called Robin for help, Robin was like, okay... This were mm, 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 and called in Batman and the League, and successfully everybody came out. No one was unduly like hurt. They successfully got in trouble and didn't get sorry, did not get caught, did not get into trouble, at least publicly. But within the team as a group, there's this tension now of okay, Robin ratted them out, or Calder is like dealing with was that even the right move and a lots of pressure coming upon him from other sources that led him to even make that choice in the first place. And this is a floating cloud over the team at the moment. The repercussions of this attack, in particular, one of the things I set up is that in a moment of anger, when Wally asked why he agreed to it, everybody gets why Connor did it. Nobody gets why Calder did mm-hmm. it. And when asked, Calder may have gotten a little bit snippy with Wally and uh, may have said some things that hurt Wally's feelings. And that's just the the worst thing in the world. No. I'm just calling that out. (laughs) So that is a major source of tension as well. Darcy, you're a terrible person. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. (laughs) Just wait. (laughs) Nice. Oh, man. Everyone goes to the dark side when I play them, okay? That's just, that's my (laughs) shame. Oh, yeah. That is totally true. Mm -hmm. Darcy the Tank. 
<laughs> okay, that sounds great. So where are we starting our adventure, Brendan? Well, so one quick thing that I want to do as we get into it, I left one piece of the characters open just because I want to start getting into the mode of like, masks works best when you are in charge of your characters and you control your characters and I'm going to ask you how you feel and how you think. And I, I know I set up a lot of stuff in advance and that's for the sake of this one shot, but I really want to get into the mode of like, you own these people. And so the, the final thing I want to do to wrap up the characters to get us into it and to get into that mode of taking ownership is I did not actually assign influence for them. And influence is this core mechanic of masks. It means if I have influence over you, you care about what I say, do, or think. Mm. My words matter to you. You can always give someone influence. I can always say, yeah, I care what you think, and therefore I give you influence. But it's a lot harder to take it back. It's a lot harder for me to say, well, I don't I don't care. You're not my real mm-hmm. dad. I don't <laughs> care. Uh, that's, right. that's a lot more complicated. So at the moment, Every playbook has a little section that says how much you must give out. And we're just playing these as if they are brand new characters, even though we obviously know they aren't. And so you must give out that much influence. You can always choose to give out more if you want. So I would love to go through for each of them and have you assign influence as a way of highlighting in particular, like who you think your character right now is especially... Uh, affected by their opinions are deeply important right now they're the ones who you are listening to the most out of this group right now so why don't we start the way that our cameras are set up so darcy will have you start and in general during the day why don't we just stick with that kind of general idea like so darcy will have you start first sure so calder is the legacy playbook and so i am a part of this team for better or for worse and so calder cares about what everyone thinks so i give influence to all of my teammates Although I think lots of that influence is being colored differently because of my feelings of uh, betrayal and lashing out at my teammates. So, But I still care fundamentally about what you think. I just may not show it all the time. So we all have influence on you? Mm-hmm. Got it. Emily? Okay. Sorry, I'm flipping back and forth between like five tabs. So I, as McGann is part of the Nova playbook, and because she has the happy facade, three people have influence over her, three teammates. So... Based on that, looking at what we have, I'm going to say that Connor, of course, has influence over her. Mm -hmm. Shocking. Important choices. I'm sorry. I'm just like staring at this now being like important choices. Uh, I'll say Kid Flash has influence over her because they've been pretty good friends. And Calder. Calder has influence over her. All right. Connor is the bull, which I think makes perfect sense. He smashes (laughs) things and sometimes his heart gets smashed. However, the bull, uh, only two people have influence over the bull. That is their love and their rival. That is McGann. And right now, Robin is the rival. Oh, I'm your rival. Yeah. Oh, I love it. That's right. Because you tattled. Uh, it was not tattling. We'll get into that a little later. Yeah, Mr. we will. We will. <laughs> you take personal responsibility for your actions. You sound like Batman. <laughs> Go ahead, Neil. Kid Flash is the beacon, which makes sense. So I am set to choose influence uh, or give influence rather to three of my teammates. One will be Calder, because I'm trying to see, while I've taken the criticism, like I haven't taken it well, and if anything, I've tried to ramp jokes up more oh, no. when I'm around Calder. Yeah, that's and not then gonna try, go well. And like, I always look and see if they land. Like, <laughs> that's like that's kind of my point of like seeing if the joke lands with Calder, and then I'm like, oh, well, whatever. Oh. And then McGann, because... For the most part, she always laughs at my jokes because I need some validation here, guys. Okay. And then, of course, Robin, who is my longtime friend before the team even got together. So I can always look to there to get some comfort because, hey, we're besties. So totally true. And uh, Robin is the, uh, as mentioned earlier, the protege playbook because his mentality is still that of the kind of sidekick of Batman until he figures out his life. So I get to choose. I, I can choose my demeanor of either playful or business. And so your character's a mullet. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> playful in the front, business in the back. No wait, the other way around. Yeah, the other way around. That's that's not until I become Nightwing, and then I get the mullet. Yeah. Okay. If, if anybody remembers the '70s mullet, '80s mullet. But I, I was at first at first going to say playful, but I think Robin's going through some real hard time right now. Yes. So I think he's all business right now. So he, he would normally be that playful thing. So if it's playful, it says give influence to two teammates. But if you choose business, give influence to no one. Ooh. 
So, oh. uh, but I'm going to opt, actually, because Brendan said that that was an option. I'm going to opt to make sure that Kid Flash has influence on me because that makes sense to me. He's my uh, my anchor, my ground right now. But other than that, Robin is almost kind of trying to make sure that he's not Batman. And by doing that, he's becoming Batman. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I think we're at right now. Yeah, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> also, hashtag Superboy was wrong. <laughs> hashtag Superboy did nothing wrong. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I long for. Neither did Vandal Savage. <laughs> and neither did Calder. That's fantastic. All right, and anything else that we need to set up, Brendan? No, that's uh, the final bit of the characters to put together, so they are all ready to go, and we can get into it. Fantastic. All right, so I'm going to open this up a little bit like an episode and slide us in. So the first thing is as our show opens up, is we see in sort of a darkly lit metallic chamber, we see just a pod, a large cylindrical pod, and a light suddenly blinks on over top it, shining down on the pod. And then from off screen, we hear a voice say, They are ready. Prepare to deploy the attack. And then we cut from that into a scene of jubilation and happiness and the little scroll at the bottom probably says what happy harbor high i believe and you know we cut to probably the, the shot of all the mortarboards flying in the air and coming back down and people are cheering and happy and excited and we've got this assembled group of graduates and everybody's sitting in the uh, audience who's not actually graduating and uh connor and mcgann are up with the rest of their class and wearing the cap and gown and I just want to do a quick flip around to each of you and get a quick impression of, like, how you are looking right now. What the expression on your face is in this moment of, like, graduation! Theoretically, everybody should be excited and happy and thrilled! And so, just like you said, uh, I just want to go down the line. So, Calder, you're in the audience because you actually aren't graduating. And wh- what do you look like as the camera sort of cuts across your face? Furrowed brow. <laughs> <laughs> the two words I would use to describe Calder right now. You know, he's looking nice on this day of celebration for his friends, but he's got maybe some kind of Atlantean, you know, Aquaman, like, you know, symbol of his king and of his mantle a little bit. You know, I, I don't know if there's some kind of pin or insignia that he can wear. You know, not like full, no, nothing full out there. But he, yeah, he's, he's really, he looks more formal on earth than I think he's ever looked before and the suit doesn't quite fit him right you know he looks a little uncomfortable in his own skin but he's got this furrowed brow and he's having a hard time you know he's kind of looking slightly off from the stage at all times he's kind of a little lost in thought awesome okay so not playing into the whole rapturous joy of celebration at all no (laughs) excellent okay and the camera cuts over to Megan and uh, so what does Megan look like amidst all of the other graduates Grad- graduates. McGann. I'm going to keep using that word. <laughs> McGann is over the moon. She is incredibly excited. She has been waiting for this moment for her entire life on Earth because this is Aww. incredibly exciting. This is the biggest moment in teenage high school dumb. It's important. She is like five seconds away from like tackle hugging Connor. She is just that oh. excited. She's beaming. She's just so happy to be there. That's excellent. Okay. And then I mean, as you said, you're like about to tackle hug Connor. Yes. <laughs> so then Connor. Uh, Connor is happy that McGann is happy. So <laughs> he he is in uh, the black gown, but you can see that, you know, where it cuts off sort of like halfway down the shin, he's still wearing his cargo pants and like his regular <laughs> shoes. He definitely hasn't dressed up underneath this <laughs> gown. Occasionally he's like adjusting it because like, it's just, it's not that comfortable. You know, like I hate, I hate gowns. Uh, it's too close yeah, to a cape. Yeah, he capes. But, but of course, like his his he's got the extra tassels, right? The National Honor Society and all the pins, oh, yeah. because it turns out that like taking tests was super easy. That cat in his brain. When you can just memorize books. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> I didn't I didn't mean to do it, but you know, McGann is there, and like he's as usual scowling. But you know, she like squeezes his hand. He looks over. He gives her a smile. And he goes back to scowling. He's sort of back and forth between like looking at her and being happy and then like looking out at the crowd, acknowledging the the rest of the team when he sees them in the crowd, right? Just like a, a little head nod at Calder and Kid Flash. He reluctantly, like he gives one eventually to, to Robin. But yeah, it's definitely still mostly scowling. Sort of half scowl, half smile. Back and forth. Back and forth. <laughs> awesome. And yeah, as... as- 
he's looking across the crowd, right? And we see his gaze cut across. We then cut to Wally back in the audience. Wally, what, what do you look like? Well, obviously I have food from the concession stand. I was trying to decide what I wanted. <laughs> so I was, so through a full mouth of a corn dog, you can hear me humming the tune of Graduation <laughs> by Vitamin C the whole time. And like trying to see if, again, like if Calder thinks it's funny and then looking back to Robin and like actually singing the words. Oh my gosh. Him. Oh, that's too good. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. Calder, Calder does not find it funny. At all. I didn't think so. <laughs> I thought Emily was oh. going to choke. She, when you said that, she was trying to drink some. I'm said fine. That. I'm fine. <laughs> that's amazing. And and so Robin, right next to Wally, what do you look like? Uh, so it sounds like Robin and Calder and Wally are all right next to yeah. each other. So I think I think we've got Robin on one side, Wally awkwardly in the middle. Oh yeah. Calder on the other side, and uh, Robin is uh, he's dressed nice, like mm-hmm. he's dressed up, like he normally does, but he's got mm-hmm. his sunglasses on, and he kind of smiles at Wally when Wally turns to him and starts singing the words. Um, but he's just not. Wally knows that, so he's trying to get Calder to smile and to connect. He looks to Robin, and Robin is off in his own little world and mm-hmm. not, like, giving him that time of day kind of thing either. And so everything is wrong. <laughs> Just oh. for Wally, I think everything is wrong. And Robin is, he keeps trying to be the Robin he was. Like, the laughing, but then, like, grounded and serious and, like, you know, let's get it done, but I love you guys mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. But he, it's like he's almost leaving that behind a little bit trying to figure out his own path and not realizing that that was his own path. It's like, I was this person before, but that's because maybe Batman wanted me to be that person. And I don't know if I want to be that person. He's just going through a lot of issues right now. So he's basically standing there quietly with his sunglasses on. But when Connor turns to him and kind of gives him a nod, he can see one of Robin's eyebrows kind of raise up above his sunglasses. (laughs) Like, okay, I'll register that and nod. I acknowledge you exist. Right. What's going on in Robin's head is, is man, you'd think with a, a guy with that many honors buttons, he would have made better decisions. That's what's going through Robin's head. So right good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I love this introduction to our, our team. And I mean, after we finish the pan over, we do a little bit of a cut forward in time and, you know, the official ceremony is closed and everybody's gathering with their families or friends out and around the actual ceremony site i'm assuming it's outside and you know the sun is setting across the harbor and you all have gathered together and theoretically you should be heading out on your post-graduation celebration trip there is i'm assuming the bio ship is prepared to take you all to atlantis as the nice like vacation and reward uh and so it's cloaked right now but it's over by the water ready for you to go and you're supposed to go straight away, like, out of this ceremony. So the five of you gather together, and, you know, others, uh, Uncle John is there, and and he, of course, walks up and gives Megan a big hug and says, I am so proud of you, niece. She's just beaming. She's hugging him back. She's so excited. (laughs) She's just so uh, happy to be here. (laughs) This is the best day ever. Completely not (laughs) paying attention to, to how messy everybody else is. She's the only one who's happy right now, apparently. (laughs) Even though she can read everyone's minds. Yep. (laughs) That's right. She's choosing not to read everyone's minds is what's going on. She's trying to be a normal teenager for five seconds and not know what everyone's thinking. (laughs) Just like Hello Megan on her graduation episode. Of course. Episode 13, yeah. (laughs) And uh, Connor Clark is here. (laughs) <laughs> and of course, as Clark. Wow. But to be put his hand on your shoulder and says, "I'm proud of you, Connor." W- wow that 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 means a lot. That means a lot to me, Sue. Uh, uh, Mister Mister Kent. Yeah. Um, it's, you can you can call me Clark. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Clark. Uh, cause I'm cause I'm Connor. <laughs> yeah. It's it's great. It, yeah, it's great to see you. Like I'm. I'm glad you came. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I'm oh, glad. that's so adorable. Aww. 
so Robin walks right by this conversation and just goes smooth. And he, he just says smooth and then keeps walking. Yes. Drive by sniping. Connor's like, he hears it. Of course he hears it, right? And he's just like, he ignores it. You oh, know what? Actually, oh. Robin says it to the point where the only person who can hear it is Connor. Uh, oh, yeah. And Superman. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, I guess. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. That's good. He he heard it too. I and Connor knows the Superman heard it too, but if Superman's not reacting, he's like like he's not gonna he's not gonna freak out in front of Superman. Okay, so he gives sort of a weird look as that happens, and then he looks back at you and he's like, Trouble? It's uh it it's nothing. It's you know, team stuff. I know things have been a little tense since that incident, but as far as I'm concerned, I wanna make sure you understand. I know why you did what you did. You know that that means a lot coming from you. I I just feel like, you know, it was something. It's something I had to do. You know. I still don't think it was the right choice, but I'm glad that you owned up to it. And I know why you did what you did. And no matter what else, I'm proud that you made it here. Oof. Okay. So Connor, like his face is a little ashen when like Superman is telling him that he thinks it was the wrong decision. But like he doesn't say anything. But he just sort of like hangs his head a little bit and like just nods yeah it does and i don't think bruce would be here i don't think batman would be here this does not a scene of joy and jubilation does not seem to be his bag especially when it is not specifically you dick graduating what about alfred (laughs) yeah i think alfred might be there that would be adorable oh alfred might be there yeah did you say that uh, Zatanna is there? I remember something in my letter. Yes, uh, Zatanna is here as well. And I'm I'm going to say this early and get us all on the same page. Like, Zatanna is crucial to the show, and I it makes sense for her to be here, and I think she's still here as a relevant character, but also because of the nature of the game and you being the PCs, I want to put the attention on you as the main characters. And so to a certain extent, I'm not going to focus on Zatanna okay. as much just because I am Zatanna. And you're here to entertain me, and that means that I want to focus on you. That's fair. Yeah, but I can, but I can describe scenes with her in it, and that's okay. Absolutely, yeah. She's she was almost certainly sitting alongside, cool. and she was clapping, and she looked happy. She does not seem to be buying into most of the angst. And if you've talked to her about it, she probably does not really. She's like, "This is dumb. You should get over this 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 thing that you're doing." Yeah, I think she's got influence on me too. But I like what I think is when uh, Superman calls out Connor. Connor gets ashen and he, he looks up and, and Robin's, you know, just given Zatanna like a hello hug or whatever. And Robin just turns around and stares right at him. Like Robin overheard part of that conversation and raises the eyebrow again. Like, yep. <laughs> like he backs like Superman's clearly agreeing with me kind of look on his face. Connor crushes his mortar board in his hand. Oh my gosh. <laughs> He's so nice. good. I love you, Ishan. I love you, Ishan. (laughs) That doesn't make up for anything. I feel like the last little cut I want to get before I want to go to Aqualad leading the way to the bioship to go down to Atlantis, because Aqualad, I'm assuming you have to be piloting. You have to be actually driving the ship there. You know where we're going. Where the wards are, of course. Exactly. So the last shot I want to get is, I do, on the other hand, think like Barry, as just proud of this team, would be here and celebrating. And so standing right there with Wally and observing all this tension, he just lean over and be like, are they always like this? Yes, almost always. We'll here, I've got an idea. I've also been stepping away a bunch and photobombing as much as possible because this is literally the easiest place to photobomb because (laughs) everyone's taking pictures. It's the best. (laughs) So then I want to like, if you're down, I would want the final scene to be me getting everyone together for a group shot. Oh, absolutely. And then I'll say on three, say chicken whizzy. Is Artemis here? I'm just, I'm just curious. This is me just wondering, is Artemis here? Zatanna's here. Is from a higher level perspective, same sort of answer about Zatanna focuses on you. Mm-hmm. The explanation I gave, which is in Wally's letters, that she's out on a mission looking for Cheshire as a lead on the real Roy Harper, but she's not here right now. She couldn't be here, and she regrets it. But you know, it that's important. all good. Just wanted to check. Just wanted to know. <laughs> yep, totally. All right, so yeah, so you're getting the whole team together for a nice, big, happy picture, Wally. Yep, and then I said, uh, well, on the count of three, one, two, oh, three, say God. chicken whizzy. <laughs> so, I don't know. And then we can take that photo. Because that seems, that seems likely. <laughs> That's amazing. 
Uh, and so we have we have the photo click as everybody says chicken whizzy, and I'm just imagining the tableau of oh, yeah. everybody leaning away from each other in myriad directions or looking grimmer than they should, except for <laughs> Megan, who's gleeful. She's just got her arms around Connor. She's so excited to be here. Um, Nobody else is, but she's happy this is happening. That's so good. <laughs> oh, that's excellent. Uh, All right. And so then let's go ahead and cut to the bio ship heading into the waters towards Atlantis. Again, I'm just doing quick cuts to get us in. You've probably been traveling for a little while straight from the uh, celebration. You have all whatever you need to go to Atlantis. And I want to focus on this bio ship coming in. And again, what do we see as we sort of look around the bio ship as everybody's sitting around? So like briefly, Calder, you're at the helm. What do you look like driving in? And what are you thinking about? Calder's looking happier. You know, there's a there's the hints of a smile on his face, uh, the thought of meeting old friends. He looks a little... Uh, you Maybe other people have seen him go to Atlantis before, or perhaps we've gotten other shots, and he's, you know, he's very confident. And there's, there's sort of a tension, you know, almost like he seems nervous, like he's going to screw something up again. So he's happy he's going to see friends, but he's a little jittery on the helm, and you guys get jerked around every once in a while, and he gets really, like, more flustered the more every time that happens, instead of calming down, which will help the bio ship actually fly, or swim, I suppose. You know, he kind of... So every, every once in a while, there's a bit of a jerk as he, you know, what was not concentrating and there's sort of a, a big hydrothermal vent that he has to jerk around as you're getting deeper toward Atlantis. Yeah, I think that's what's happening. That's awesome. So it is not a smooth ride. It started to be, but as he gets closer, it's just he's the, his little mistakes are flustering him more and more. Turbulence as metaphor for Calder's mind state. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's perfect. And Megan, what are you doing on the ship? So Megan is sitting in one of the other seats, just one of the other seats. And she's still excited. She's still happy. But she's kind of started to notice that no one is as excited as her. She's happy to be going back to Atlantis because she's been, I think, once before. And she wants to go see again uh, and all of that. But she's kind of started to pick up on the fact that everybody else is kind of a little more tense. And she's kind of just glancing over at Connor mostly, but at everybody kind of being like, okay, what, why can't we all just, can't we all just move past this a little bit and enjoy this time? Like the pure rapturous joy has faded into the slight uncertainty. That's awesome. Connor. Yeah, Connor is not always the happiest to like head to Atlantis because Kryptonians still need to breathe. It's sort of like the one place where like he might actually be able to die. <laughs> and he's, he's, he's sitting in his chair and like 10 minutes into the trip he realized that he's actually still gripping the crushed mortarboard like he never actually like unclenched his fist so oh, like the gown is gone he's in like his normal like outfit but like it's just there's like a cap squashed yes. in his hand and then you know McGann is is trying to reach out to him and you know you know, make conversation to make him feel better. And, you know, he, after a few minutes, realizes, like, oh, right, like, my girlfriend's talking to me. Right, I should pay attention. Probably, yeah. So, you know, he makes a little light conversation and, you know, eventually sort of tosses the mortarboard in, like, a corner of the bio ship. Because, like, it's kind of it's mm-hmm. kind of his bio ship, too, right? Like, they'll clean it together later. It's fine. <laughs> and he also remembers, like, he, it's very, like, weighing heavily in his mind that, that Calder went out on a limb for him. And so, like, when, you know, they're getting closer to Atlantis and there's the turbulence, like, Connor definitely, he doesn't look at Calder. He just sort of, like, you know, looks outside and just makes comments like, uh, they're, yeah, strong currents down here, huh? Oh, thank you. Oh, you're the best, <laughs> Connor. <laughs> That's amazing. I kind of want to focus in eventually, I want to finish going down the line, but on, on uh, McGann and Connor talking or Connor and Calder talking. But I want to see, I want to go down the line and prime the pump and see what else we want to have at the same time. So, uh, Wally, what are you doing? What do you look like on the bio ship? So, I think Wally's initial thought would have been, well, I'm saying that because this is what I initially thought when I had said we were going to Atlantis. Then I was expecting we would just be there, but now I'm more excited that we get to have the journey and that we get to be nice. under the sea. And as you can imagine now, like the first part, I'm singing under the sea. And then, of course, I've overpacked just like when I tried to go to the beach. And so, like, when we start doing the turbulence, I start getting kind of frustrated because, like, all my stuff is shifting everywhere. And so, like, I have to keep, like, putting it back in the pile that I have over in, like, the side of the bio ship. So good. So, and then I probably would spend more time with Robin because of I would assume the infrequency in which we get to go to Atlantis as 
normal, if you will, humans and the totally added everything that comes with trying to be under the water for an extended period of time. Totally. I, I want to take a quick pause. I do want to I, I want to get to Robin. I don't want this to be like cutting away from Robin, but there are a couple questions there that I'd like to it's okay. quickly resolve because I feel like it's worth uh, answering them. So Aqualad, as the speaker for Atlantis and how it functions, why aren't you taking a Zeta tube into Atlantis? There's been increased security measures as the as um, Aquaman has been struggling to both help out the League of you know the Justice League and also cover the increasing you know threats from Black Manta and other creatures and entities. So uh, the tubes Perfect. are on a pause at the moment. Perfect. And what means will Atlantis use? I assume you have something prepped so that these people who you know have to breathe uh, will not die. <laughs> uh, so w- what do you have prepped for them? I actually have something set up for that when it gets to me. Oh, sure. Okay, totally. Because I, I could imagine there being Atlantean stuff and Robin being like, I'm not going to use yours. yours yeah. Robin, are you going to provide stuff for everybody or just yourself? <laughs> not at all. It's actually not me. I'm going to say Zatanna has, pre- has prepped a, basically the equivalent of a bubblehead spell. Oh, nice. So it's basically something like an air pocket that's going to be around Wally and my and Connor's uh, and her like lower jaw. So that we can not totally. only breathe, but we can actually talk and communicate. It'll echo into the water a little bit. But we still need to wear, like, I'm prepped in a wetsuit. So, like... A, a, Perfect. Okay. You know, that that kind of thing. So that was what I was going to say when we got there. Make it a little bit easier for everyone. No, that's that's perfect. Is, is that cool with you, Aqualad? Is that, like, standard practice? I mean, I, I think it makes sense. But I think Aqualad also had a bunch of aquatic grubby things that you have to sort of attach to your neck that, that would do a similar effect, although the vocalizations aren't nearly as good. And so I yeah. think he's a little bitter that Robin has a of better course. solution. But, but you know, he he, offer, he proffers the, the horrible grub things at some point, but... Look like sea monkeys. Yeah, well, I, I could see that as as a short scene too. I could see that as a very quick thing of like, here are your breathing grubs, and Zatan is like, no, no, <laughs> not doing that. No, nope. I'm gonna go and prep the air bubble spell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. I would have written down air bubble backwards, but I don't. I I don't have time. Oh man. But also, it was probably I was gonna offer up if you don't mind that Aquaman likely has sections of the palace and. Poseidonus to have you know air rooms that we can like comfortably sleep in and take a break and all that kind of stuff because he would need to have ambassadors mm-hmm. from the surface and that kind of stuff so he, we probably have some place where we can just chill and like be normal for a little bit but if we're traveling around and moving around then you know that's my thought absolutely that that's I'm certain that's expected but they wanted to make sure also that you could yeah, go out and actually see Atlantis and like not be trapped in the air bubble rooms we set up for you. And so that's awesome. Okay, cool. And so, so Robin, what do you look like then? So as I mentioned before, I think I'm already prepped in a wetsuit. And mm-hmm. then Zatanna, I've been to it. I'm going to say I've been to Atlantis once. Mm-hmm. And so part of me is excited, but really Zatanna is very excited. It's the first time she's ever been there. Wally, did you say you've never been? Or maybe we were both there once? No, I would say we, if we've been there once, it was not for something that was leisure. It's like we had to go mm-hmm. there. Um, so then this is the first time oh, we could yeah, go yeah. to Atlantis and, and just be in Atlantis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Zatanna was briefing us on how we're going to have to, like this this bubble spell, like, oh, okay, well, you're going to have to do this and make sure you do this. And, you know, it's a little different, you know. Don't touch your face. Yeah, whatever it happens to be, you know, basically scuba prep-ish mm-hmm. kind of things, I guess. I don't know. And I'm actually giving her some basic Atlantean because, of course, Robin speaks. Oh, that's perfect. AP Atlantean, and he gets somebody to practice with all the time. So he, that's he's, perfect. you know, he's good. He's like with a lot of languages. Like he, he can get by pretty well in a lot of languages. Right. He's not an expert in anything in particular outside of obviously English. But I feel like when other people listen to him, they might think like, oh, God, you're really good at that. And he's like, yeah, but I'm not. Like, I'm missing a lot of things you don't understand that I'm missing. I need to be better because he's always, I need to be better, right? But so that's perfect. In that conversation too, like as we're talking with Zatanna and and while he's sitting next to me, I see Zatanna also like telling me in Atlantean that she's practiced a little bit because she's also good at languages Mm -hmm. that I really, really need to, really need to let it go. And I need to kind of deal with the tension between particularly Superboy and I. So she's kind of given me a little bit of a, a loving punch in the face. 
Yeah, and I mean, I, I'm even comfortable seeing that. I, I would love to see her talking to you and maybe Wally butting in and seeing McGann and Connor talking and then Connor talking to Calder. And sort of, the, I'm imagining that the point is these are happening all sort of simultaneously over the ship. Mm-hmm. These conversations, everybody having hushed conversations because they don't want anybody else to hear, <laughs> which is the great way to have a team. Yeah. <laughs> And so, like, I'll, I'll go in that order, uh, in reverse. So Zatanna, yeah, I mean, you're sharing with her bits of Atlantean. She's still priming the air bubble spell to make sure she can cast it for everybody and it'll hold for as long as you need it. And it's still a little bit of work because she's still learning, always yeah. learning. And she says to you in Atlantean, uh, as she looks up at the room and sees everybody tense, you really need to talk to Connor. I don't think Connor wants to talk. And you know what? He needs to take responsibility for his actions. It wasn't okay. He call, they calls me. He calls me while they're in danger and wants me to hack into LexCore from the cave? Like, why don't you tell me what's happening? No. When he apologizes for what he did, then we can talk about it. But until then, if he wants to be Broody McBruderson, then he can just do his thing. Yeah. See, what you're doing right now is what he would do. What are you talking about? He, <laughs> he says He says with his, like, best Batman face on. Of course. <laughs> what the Robin I know would go and talk to him and find out what's wrong and, you know, actually be a good teammate instead of waiting for him to confess all of his sins. Well, you know what? That's what I've always been. I've always been like that. I'm always the one stepping up. I'm always the one telling people to work together and and Calder snorts. I'm, that's if he can overhear because <laughs> oh, he can nice. speak Atlantean. <laughs> of course, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. We're probably going back and forth. I actually imagine Calder's hearing is excellent. <laughs> yep, as oh, well. Yeah. I would imagine. Real quick, so Calder snorts and Robin immediately stops talking. So the the one thing. I, I would like to interject because what you did, uh, we triggered some of the mechanics, and I'd Ooh. like to use this moment to introduce some of them, because uh, that was a perfect Good. moment. Zatanna has influence over you, you said. So when she says to you, that's not the Robin I know, you should be this different kind of thing, what she's saying is you should be more mundane and less of something else, presumably in this case superior. And so she's changing, okay. she's changing your labels, your labels being how you see yourself and the stats you roll in the game to do stuff. And Got it. You, in awesome, perfect form, exactly the way that you're supposed to, rejected her influence and said to her, like, no, 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 no. You're wrong. I'm not listening to you. No. And that that is a perfect what it looks like to reject the influence. So there's a move for rejecting influence. And okay. I, w- I would like you to roll that to see how this goes, just as Wally is coming over to butt in. So... In this case, you're going to be rolling 2d6, and you're not going to be adding okay. anything in particular. You're just rolling the 2d6. I think it's great that you said I need to be less superior, because you you pegged out my superior as high as it could be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I'm doing this. I rolled a 7, actually. That's not bad. Excellent. That's perfect. Okay. So on a uh, 7 and 9, you successfully hold to yourself and tune them out, and you'll get to choose one from a list of three options. You could clear a condition or mark potential by immediately acting to prove them wrong, where clearing a condition is getting rid of something like, I'm angry, I'm afraid, I'm guilty, and marking potential is the equivalent of experience points. So if you mark potential, you're one step closer to advancing. But to do that, you have to oh, you have to immediately act to prove for wrong. You have to do something right here, right now, that's more than just like, just saying you're wrong. It has to, you have to like, prove it. You can shift one label up and one label down, your choice. So that's changing your own labels however you choose. One goes up, one goes down. Or okay. you can cancel her influence and take plus one forward against her, which means she can't do this to you again. She no longer has influence over you. You no longer care about what she says or thinks in the same way. Yeah, that's not going to happen. That's what I figured. So, gosh, I want to do something more interactive than marking potential. But you said that I have to, I have to say something that proves that I'm right. Yeah, you have to prove it. You have to do immediately act to prove her wrong, that you need to be this way. That I will say that I will say to her, tell me what he did right. You tell me why he was right in the way that he did what he did. Oh, and I feel like 
if I may add a detail to to make it even like a little bit, yeah, your voice rises a little bit, and you're speaking in English, so he he would clearly be able to yeah. hear. Yeah. Okay, I do. Well, he would. Yeah, he could hear anything that was being said. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's so annoying, by the way, <laughs> Connor. <laughs> uh, so good. All right, excellent. I buy that. So go ahead and mark potential. And when you say when you say that and your voice rises a little bit, she, whether because she doesn't have anything to say or because she's like, nope, you're getting heated. I'm not going to push back on this because this is dumb. And yeah, but of course, in Robin's head, even though he's fought against her on this, he's still registering what she says as like a seed, I'm sure will grow Yeah, because he really cares about her and respects her opinion. Totally. And he knows she does. She doesn't bring stuff like this up mm-hmm. casually. Totally. Excellent. All right. And so then Wally comes over right in that pause where he where Robin says, tell me what he did right. <laughs> he, Wally leans into the scene. <laughs> yes. Wally leans into the scene. Oh, oh. cute. So essentially I'll, I'll lean in and I feel like I would have a nickname. So I'll say, um, Z, I have a concern. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to eat with this on. <laughs> awesome. Oh, I, that's too cute. Um... So okay, Robin. Robin laughs a little bit. Calder, actually. like the hint of a smile happens. <laughs> Does he say it with like well, mustard yeah, no, on his no, face? No, it's like on the thing. Like, and, like I'm like trying to figure out how this is supposed to work. <laughs> so let me ask you a question, there, Wally. Are you like I could see it being either way, it being Wally. But are you doing this intentionally to try to defuse the situation? Are you purposely playing a little bit of the fool to make yeah, people like, laugh? Well, yeah, twofold. It's like it is a legitimate concern that I would have left for another time. But I'm seeing that like <laughs> it it could help break the tension. So I'll lean in right now and be like, this is what I'm dealing with. Someone help me. <laughs> so actually, I what I think this is is triggering another move that I'm going to call out. I think you're comforting or supporting because I think you're trying to comfort Robin and make him laugh and make him stop feeling so Batmanish. I'll I'll say. Does that check out? Does that feel right? Oh yeah, definitely. Excellent. Okay, so to comfort or support, what you're going to be doing is you're going to roll and you're going to add your mundane. So it's, it's just to double check. It's two d six plus my mundane. That is exactly correct. Oh, I did very well then. So that's twelve. Excellent. Wow. Okay. That just means the next one is going to be god awful. But go on. Snake eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what this means is Robin hears you like it it reaches Robin and if Robin opens up to you Robin will get a benefit and because you rolled so high you will also get a benefit but it's all contingent upon Ro- Robin opening up to you what that means Robin opening up to you is actually your call so you get to make the call of whether or not Robin has done enough like if you're like Robin giggled that's enough. Then I'm like, cool. All right, we're all set. But if you're like, I need Robin to tell me his deepest, darkest secrets, that's your decision if that's the bar for opening up. So we can see how Robin reacts, and you can decide if that's enough at that time. So, I mean, how does Robin react? So if 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 Wally leans into the scene and he's got, like, chicken whizzy, like, all over his, like, face or whatever, and he's, like, got a serious face on going, uh, Z, I, um, I, I don't know how to eat in this. I, I can't imagine Dick is going to hold his hold himself together. So I think he's going to start laughing and it, despite himself. And he also was able to blow off a little steam by yelling a little bit. <laughs> so I think he's able to kind of took off the pressure valve a bit and then just is kind of able to hear what's being said. And he knows what Wally's doing. Like, he knows that, it, it. yes, it's a genuine problem for Wally, and that's what's so funny about it. It's the timing and how he presented it, which is why Wally is Wally. So that's my thought. So, Wally, is that enough? Is that opening up to you? Yeah, because the, the, yeah, the, the, the two things I were thinking was, one, that they would be genuinely funny, and that it would also, right. I mean, even with the establishment that maybe the, Zatanna doesn't have the influence in the situation anymore, at least he's admitting that he's thinking about it. Like, open to the idea Perfect. of processing what's going on so yeah okay excellent okay so just to resolve that move because you think he did open up to you robin you get to mark potential clear condition or shift your labels exactly similar to before so mark potential the experience shift your labels one up one down and uh wally you get to choose to either add a team to the pool or clear condition yourself add a team to the pool is a thing that hasn't quite come up yet 
but essentially it is a pool of points that you use as a team to help each other out, and it's sort of a, a metric of how cohesive the team is at this moment. Oh, cool. By default, it starts at one, so right now it's sitting at one, I have my little note that says one. You can add a point to the team pool if you want, Wally. Yes. Wally Excellent. as the beacon okay. will do that. That's perfect. Perfect. And Robin Robin is actually going to, he's going to reduce his superior by mm-hmm. one, and he's going to increase his mundane awesome. by one. Perfect. And I feel like it, that little conversation, if it's cool with everybody, that closes up with Zatanna being like, oh, let me, let me help let me help you there, Wally. Oh, oh gosh, it's everywhere. Oh, gosh. <laughs> is that cool? Oh, yep. yeah. All right. She's memorized a spell that's that's clean Wally's face backwards. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it's specifically oh, yeah. Wally's face. It won't work on anyone else. <laughs> right. All right. So then I want to shift over. And Connor and Megan, you were talking or... Obviously, you are entrenched in your own part of the ship. So I want to focus in on there and be like, Megan, you're noticing Connor is still fully within his own thoughts, and he's only barely noticing that you're looking at him. And what do you say to him, Megan? Uh, well, I'm going to I'm gonna reach out telepathically, because we just do that. That's just part of how oh, we nice. talk to each other. I'm just going to be like, hey, what's wrong? Something seems like it's wrong. What's going on? What's going on with you? And of course... As McGann knows, Connor is always more open to talking telepathically because he doesn't have to like show any emotion or like stop scowling. He can, <laughs> and no one can overhear. Um, so, you know, it's just, you know, everything. Like, did you hear Superman? Yeah, I did. I know. I know. Okay. It's okay. You got, you guys got out fine. Nobody got hurt. That's what matters, right? I agree with you. I don't know why why Robin like won't let this go. I don't know why he needed to call in everyone else. We were fine. I wish you would have told me, though. I should have been there. I should have helped. You could have called me. Connor's quiet for a second. It's like, yeah, yeah, you're right. I should have. Yeah, I should I should have told you first because you're important. And also, you probably would have been better to bring along than Calder. He says telepathically. I know, I know. That's why I'm not saying anything. (laughs) But still. You could have told everybody. You didn't have to keep this a secret. Everybody cares about you. You know that. I I do know that. We've been together. The team's been together for years now. I I know that they care about me, but I care about them and I just, I wanted to keep them safe. This was a thing for me. This wasn't a mission. This this wasn't for the team, this was for me. And if you have to do something like this again, just let me know. I want, I want to help you. I want to help with whatever you're trying to do. I know you're uncertain about everything and that's fine, but don't shut me out. You're supposed to be honest with me. We're supposed to be honest with each other, okay? Yeah, you're right. Oh, that's so good. If I may interject, I, I hate I hate to be the rules. Uh, <laughs> that was awesome. But I do think like that conversation, there were a number of moments that I could have picked out from Moose, but I think overall it makes sense to most treat that as McGann is telling you who to be or who you are, Connor. So she shifted your labels and you saying okay and yes sounds like you were accepting that. So, I mean, in to my ears, to my interpretation... She's actually saying, you're a person, we care about you, you're one of us, be a person, be open, talk to us, which would be your mundane up, that part of you that is a mundane, regular person that understands people and talks to people. And so that would be mundane up and I'm going to say danger down. And it sounded like you were accepting that. Is that is that cool? Because it's coming from her, yeah. Am I going to admit, yeah, I made a mistake to other, <laughs> other people, non-telepathically? No, nah, that's, that's not happening, that's not happening. Uh, and also, okay, so <laughs> let's remember, Connor has excellent hearing and speaks every language. Oh, that's right. So, however, however, so when uh, Robin is, like, trying to, like, teach uh, some Atlantean to Zatanna, like, he's, Connor's still a little grumpy at the beginning, and, you know, telepathically to McGann, he's just, like, his accent's all wrong. <laughs> he's just, he's... <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> They're not even going to understand, like... What he's saying, Aww. but you know, then they have their conversation, right, telepathically, and and he's so focused on that that he doesn't hear like the bulk of the Zatanna awesome. uh, Robin conversation until until like Robin like yells and then sort of like 
everyone snaps out. And then he keeps it. Yeah, that's fantastic. I love it. So, I mean, and, and I feel like that, just to have it intersect, like that moment of Robin yelling comes right at the end, just as you're about to ask McGann, like, how are you doing? That's when Robin nice. yells. Nice. Yeah. And draws everybody's attention away. And I mean, that sort of interrupts your flow. But the last thing I want to do for for this moment here in the Bioship, I want to make sure if you did want to go talk to Calder, uh, I think like you absolutely could. But I also easily imagine everybody is well entrenched in their own stuff. So you tell me, would you go over to Calder? Uh, not right now, um, because, okay. yeah, McGann is feeling ignored. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not going to walk <laughs> away from her. Oh, but that would be more drama. Also, yeah, more distractions okay. for Calder may may not be good for the, the entire party. Or, you know, <laughs> with the driving. With the driving, yes. With yeah. the driving. Also, this relationship needs to last three more years, at least. So. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. All right, so uh, I'm actually, I'm going to turn the camera. We focus in on Calder then. And, you know, you're still trying to keep the Bioship on course. You keep getting distracted by hearing the snippets of the conversation and understanding it and Robin saying out loud, loudly, clearly audibly what he did and it is not helping with you keeping the ship on course. And then the Bioship's controls start pinging very faintly with like a weak and frazzled distress signal. Whatever the case would be, it's clearly coming on some sort of Atlantean channel. It's, it's coming from... Oh, wow. Place. Calder commands the party, halt your bickering. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's a distress signal coming through the bioship. Magan, can you help me isolate it? Sure. I float over. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm picturing, I'm picturing uh, Calder in that, that scene with Captain Marvel. Enough! Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Where he like, tears that thing apart. <laughs> I've had enough of yeah. your childishness. <laughs> yes. I was looking pretty flustered. McGann, I don't, I don't think it's like a huge stretch of your abilities to be able to clean up the signal, tap into the telepathic frequency of the bioship, and try to get a clearer thing of it. So, like, just a little bit of focusing, and you, you clean it up, and you pick up this request in Atlantean, obviously. But it says something along the lines of translated from Atlantean. Mayday, mayday, we are under attack strange figures emerging from over the ridge. They're coming in droves. We need all forces to respond to the southwest side of Poseidonus. Immediately we are under attack. I repeat, all Atlantean citizens get to shelters. If you are part of the Atlantean Guard, get to the southwest face. Immediately we are under attack. Any other forces who receive this message and can assist, please. Justice League, if you receive this, please. On, going on and on and on. Mayday, mayday, we are under attack. Conclude Mask's actual play, story arc title, Relations, Episode 1, Episode 2 inches T-7 days. You've been listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast. Our hosts are Rich Howard and Emily Booza. Our editor and producer is Neil Powell. Our theme was composed by Emily Mio. Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening, and stay whelmed. Stay whelmed.